fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Abner Jenkins came into the general store when a number of men were gathered around the cracker barrel. He approached the counter and waited until Hank Vinton finished waiting on an Indian. Well, I'll have to get the rest of your things out in the shade. Ah. Oh, uh, just a minute till I see what Jenkins wants. How are you, Abner? I don't feel no better than a look. Now look downright stove in. Look is still going against you, huh? Hank, I've got to have some food. My folks are hungry. Yeah. You stretched your credit mighty far. I know I have. I'd like to help you, Abner, but... Uh, I'll get cash someday, Hank. I'll pay up. You've been saying that for a long time. Well, you get money. You can't get a job. You sold off everything you could sell. You know blame well that I'm rightfully a part owner of Jim Murdoch's gold mine. Fiddle, fiddle. It's true. He swindled me on that deal. Now, where have I heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. You can all laugh at me, but you'll see... I've just been waiting till I could find a man that'd prove how Murdoch swindled me. Well, how long do you aim to wait, Abner? I'm through waiting. <laughs> I'm going to see Jim Murdoch and have a showdown. I'll make him square things with me. Hey, Jim Murdoch will break in, too. Maybe he's twice my size. But a gun will even things up. Now, look who's talking. <laughs> you can all laugh, but you just wait. You'll see. <laughs> hey, when are you going to have the showdown, Abner? I'm through with waiting. I'm going to call on Jim Murdoch tonight, and I'll take a gun. The Indian who witnessed the scene in the store left town with his purchases. It was dusk when he reached a nearby camp where he told the Lone Ranger what he had heard. So they laughed at him, Otello. That's right. Ridicule is especially hard to take when a man's hungry. I want to see Jenkins before he calls on Murdoch for that showdown. Well, me know where Jenkins lives. Good. We'll go there. Someone's coming. Ah. Yes? Oh. Mrs. Jenkins? You, you're masked. Please don't be alarmed. Oh, what do you want? Who are you? We want to see Abner. Well, he... Uh... That is... Isn't he here? 
He hasn't gone far. He'll be here at any minute. I see. Well, we'll not wait for him. Put that package down at the door, Toto. Uh, let me put it right well, here. What's that? Food. Tell Abner that I left it for him to repay a kindness. Oh, food. It isn't likely that Abner will remember me or what he did for me. That don't matter. Fate must have brought you here at this time, mister. Well, uh, fate hasn't told me where Jim Murdoch lives. Murdoch? Can you tell me how to reach his home? There's a path leading north from the big rock. Just follow it for five miles and you'll be at Murdoch's. Oh, he lives quite a distance from town. Thanks, Mrs. Jenkins. Thanks to you, mister. Thanks no end. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Jim Murdoch's large rambling hull stood alone at the edge of a deep ravine. Murdoch sat in front of the fireplace with one of his henchmen. Barney, did you actually hear Jenkins make those threats? No. But I got the story straight from men who did hear him. So far, he's been without any proof that it'd stand in court. If he ever got that proof, I'd be through. He could shoot him and say it was in self-defense. He'd be backed up by the men who heard him say he was coming here with a gun for a show. No, Barney, I don't want to shoot him best, I'd have to answer a lot of questions and be held for a trial. Soon after I got the gold mine, I realized that I wouldn't feel safe until Jenkins was out of the way. He's played right into my hands by declaring he's going to have a showdown. What are you going to do? I'm going to frame Jenkins for murder. And let the law hang him. For murder? Great day, who's he going to murder? He's going to hang for murdering me. What? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't intend to die. <laughs> I'll simply disappear. There'll be evidence to hang Jenkins. I've made a will leaving everything I own to an imaginary cousin in the East. I'll sneak away, disguise myself, and return as this cousin to take possession of my property. But the law can't hang Jenkins unless there's a dead body. <laughs> Will you see how I have things planned? Maybe that's Jenkins. Uh, go to the next room. One would think I'm alone. All right. Leave the door open a crack so he can hear the reception I give the poor fool. Well, what? Why, it's Abner Jenkins. Where's I? Come on in here out of the night. Great Scott, Abner. This is a fine surprise. Well, I... Yeah, I don't I... see your horse out there. I sold my horse. Well, come on over the fire and get warm. Quite a walk from where you live, isn't it? Sure is. But a man that can't buy food can't afford to own a horse. Well, sit down there, Abner. Now, what do you mean by saying you can't buy food? You know what I mean, Murdoch. You know I've quit working the land that joined in your gold mine. Yes, but that was... I'm flat broke. You don't say. I'm sorry to hear that, Abner. I didn't know it. I don't get to town very often, so I don't hear things. Murdoch, you made a slick deal when you suggested we break up our joint ownership of the gold mine. Well, Abner, seemed like the only thing to do. You didn't approve of my methods, so I suggested we divide the property and each take half to work as he wanted. Yeah. Then you brought in Barney Weaver. Said he was an impartial expert to divide the land. At the time, Abner, I thought you had the better deal. I had nothing. You had the mother load. I wonder if you knew about that when you wanted to bust up the partnership. Now, Abner. Seems curious that Barney stayed on to work for you at a handsome salary. If you have any suspicion... Oh, I don't aim to make a charge I can't prove. Point is, Murdoch, I'm up against it. My folks are hungry. Well, you came to the right place. I just wish you'd have come sooner. I didn't know you were up against it. I'm going to help you. Well, I didn't expect you to take it like this. <laughs> Did you think you'd need that gun to get help from me, hmm? Well, I... Now, let's see it. Well, it's not much of a gun. Mm, a pretty old-timer. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. That's a hair trigger. <laughs> here, put it away. Now, let's see what we can find around here. I'm going to load you down and send you home so your wife will think it's Christmas. <laughs> And Barney, he thanked me. <laughs> he sure was surprised. <laughs> uh, too bad the old fool won't be able to enjoy his sudden prosperity. What's your next move? Well, we got to make it look like there was a fight in this room. Kick that chair over while I scuff up the rug. Hmm? There. Now, 
about spilling this table. Go ahead. That'll do. I noticed you fired a shot from Abner's gun. That's the shot that's supposed to have killed me. I fired it into this heavy log. Give me a hand with it. Log? Yeah, we'll shove it through that window just as Abner's supposed to have done with my dead body. Oh, I get it. Falls into the fast-moving water at the bottom of the ravine. That's it. It's carried downstream. Just as a dead man might be. And that's how the sheriff accounts for your remains. Oh, pretty slick, Murdoch. <laughs> as soon as we get rid of the log, I'll tell you what you're to do in the morning. Now grab a hold. We shove the log right through the window. and Tonto found themselves riding along a narrow path between a swift running stream and a perpendicular wall. The masked man reined up. Wait up, Tonto. Who's over? Oh, who's got the fellow? Back no fellow. Oh. We'll have to turn back. Ah. This wrong trail. We come five miles. Not find house of murder, fella. We found his house, all right. Huh? Right above us. The edge of the ravine. See it? Ah. That right. We made a mistake about a mile back where the trail forked. We should have gone to the left instead of the right. Oh, we go back now? Yes, I... What's that? It's the wind of the water. Ah, come from house. Come on, we'll find out what it is. Careful, Tonto. The water's mighty fast. Ah, it's plenty deep, too. Yes, up to my hips. A log. Ah. We push it ashore? Might as well. I wonder what happened up in that house. You may not know. Drag the log ashore. This far now? Yes. Otto, I think the log came through a window. I heard glass smashing just before I saw the log falling. Uh, me here, too. I wonder if that was part of the showdown Jenkins intended to have with Murdoch. Right there, Silver. <laughs> Let's find out. Come on, Hit him up, scout. Abner Jenkins traveled slowly, leading the heavily loaded mule that Murdoch had given him. He'd gone about a mile when he heard hoofbeats approaching. Following their back trail, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the fork at about the same time as Jenkins. Oh, sir, oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. In the moonlight, Abner saw that one of the horsemen wore a mask. Tonto, at the same moment, recognized Jenkins. Oh, this fellow named Jenkins. Good. Yeah. What's this? Who are you? Uh, Tonto saw you in the store today, Jenkins. Oh, oh yes. But that mask... Oh, we're friends. Your wife will tell you we left food at your house. You did? Oh, gosh, this is a big day. Did you get that load of supplies from Murdoch? Yep. How'd you know? Have any trouble with him? Oh, he was plenty generous. Why are you asking all these questions? Something happened in Murdoch's house just a few minutes ago. Well, everything was all right when I left him there. He was all alone. Uh, how long ago did you leave him? Well, it was a half mile back. I walked, leading the pack mule... Must have been 10 or 15 minutes. Something happened after you left. Yeah? You go on home, Jenkins. Tonto and I'll see what we can learn. Hold on. Who are you? Why did you leave food at my house? We thought you might need it. We'll meet again. But and can't... we'll see you in the morning. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. It was a happy morning in the Jenkins home. <laughs> Food and cash and clothes. Oh, I tell you, Molly, things are going to be fine from now on. In the excitement over the things that Murdoch had given him and the promise of a job, Abner forgot the meeting with the masked man and Tonto. He was reminded of it when he heard hoofs outside the house. Oh, someone's reined up outside. Maybe that masked man I met last night. He said he'd be here this morning. I'll get it. Oh, it's the sheriff. Hello, Jenkins. Morning, Sheriff. Won't you come in? Morning, Mrs. Jenkins. I guess you both know Barney Weaver. Howdy. Oh, leave the door open and let the sunshine come in. Jenkins, Barney brought me some news this morning. I went to Jim Murdoch's place to check on it. I just come from there. Yeah? What about it, Sheriff? You said you were going to call on him last night and have a showdown. Did you go? Yeah, but it was all friendly. Why? Murdoch's been murdered. What? Murdered? Look there, Sheriff. Those are Murdoch's blankets. I was with him when he bought them. Uh. How'd you get him, Jenkins? He gave those to me. He gave me clothes and food and a mule and, and cash, too. <laughs> Murdoch was never that generous. He was, I tell you. Jenkins, didn't you kill Murdoch, then shove his body out the window into Rapid River so it wouldn't be found? No, no. And load up a mule with stolen goods? No such thing. Where's your gun? Well, it's right there in the shelf. Uh. One shot fired. I can explain that, Sheriff. Maybe you can explain these things, too. Weaver, you stop pawing through things. Sheriff, I found these in the table drawer. Murdoch's watch and his diamond ring. Well, I never saw those things before. Don't try to say Murdoch gave these to you. I never said no such thing. Jenkins, I'll have to take you in. Wait, Sheriff, listen. I left Murdoch alive and well. On the way downhill, I met a masked man and a redskin on the way to his house. Now, maybe that won't they... do, Jenkins. There's too much against you. Look there at the door. What? What? That's the man. That's the masked man I saw. Hold it, Sheriff. Don't draw. Why, you... Draw a gun on me, huh? You too, Barney. Keep your hands still. How long you been there? Long enough to learn a few things. Bring the horses, Tonto. How you see here? Save you your can't... questions, Sheriff. I'll answer them later. Don't worry, Abner. They won't find you, Gilly. Open that door. Let me at him. Oh, Come up. Stop. The Lone Ranger and Tonto maintained a fast pace for five miles. When they reined up, they were but a short distance from Murdoch's house. Oh, Silver, hold on, Silver. Hold on, big fellow. Hold on, I. Stay here with the horses, Tonto. I want to get into Murdoch's house without being seen or heard. Ah, me wait here. Jim Murdoch was in the bedroom, packing carefully selected articles in a carpet bag. He thought he was alone in the house. These letters. Yeah, better take them. Better take the jewelry, too. Don't want to tempt Barney by leaving it here. Going somewhere? Hey, what? Steady. Mask. Don't try it. I'll drop you before you take one step toward the gun on that dresser. Where'd you come from? It's pretty lively for a dead man, aren't you, Murdoch? Who are you? I wanted you to know that. I wouldn't wear this mask. What do you want? Abner Jenkins is in jail for murdering you. The sheriff saw evidence of a fight in your living room and had reason to believe your body was lost in the river down below. It's a very good case of circumstantial evidence. You want something or you wouldn't be here. Yes, I've been waiting since last night to satisfy my curiosity. What do you mean? I was at the bottom of the ravine when a heavy log dropped from your window. Oh. On the way here to find out about it, I met Abner. He's on his way home. I looked in your window. The disorder in the living room deceived me just as it did the sheriff. I thought there'd been a fight. You know, for a moment, Murdoch, I was quite concerned about your state of health. Now, wait. Listen to me. I was reassured when I saw you and Barney having a friendly visit by the fireplace. You weren't expecting company, so I left as quietly as I'd arrived. You probably have a price. How much do you want to forget that you've seen me? I want information, Murdoch. And even after you've given it to me, I'm not going to forget that I've seen you. Can't be bought off, hmm? No. All right, then. We settle it another way. Like this. That suits me. I'll fix you. Help yourself. 
Here, have another. Oh, I'll kill you. Not that gun. We'll settle this without guns like this. Toto, listen to me. I left Murdoch in the bedroom and set the stage for a showdown with Barney Weaver. I'm not good. I'm going into town for the sheriff. You go in there with Murdoch. Now, here's what you're to do. Abner Jenkins was locked in a cell adjoining the office where the sheriff sat at his desk. Barney Weaver, looking smug and satisfied, sat nearby as Molly pleaded for her husband. And as for the ring and the watch, Sheriff, I know Abner didn't bring those into the house. Aside from the ring and watch, Mr. Jenkins, there's plenty of evidence against Abner. It looks like he shoved the body through the window so as it'd fall into the river and be carried away. I don't believe it. Neither do I. But, hey, the back door. You... Take it easy. I have no trouble. Why, you... Hold it, Sheriff. Gunplay won't get us anywhere. Relax. Uh, all right. Sheriff, you claim there's a lot of circumstantial evidence against Abner Jenkins. Enough to hang him. Oh, no. Did you make a thorough search of Murdoch's house? A thorough search? Did you look in every room and every closet? In the cellar, in the attic? Well, uh, I... Or did you take Weaver's word for the fact that the house was empty and base your opinion on the condition of the living room? What's it to you? Well, see here, this is none of your affair. Sheriff... Give me a chance to tell you the truth and prove every statement I make. Oh. Who are you? What's the difference? You're interested in the Murdoch affair. All right. You talk and I'll listen. If you know anything about it, speak up. We'll have to go to Murdoch's house. We've already been there. As soon as I saw that something was wrong, I came and got the sheriff. There are a few things the sheriff didn't see, Weaver. And uh, no one knows it better than you. What do you mean? You know what I mean. By thunder, I resent... Hold it. Watch yourself, Barney. That man's guns mean business. I'd better take your gun, Barney. You might get careless and complete your draw. Then you'd get hurt. You... Better. Here, Sheriff. You take charge of his gun. Uh, Sheriff, you can't let a masked man get away with this sort of high-handed business. Barney, if you were in my position, staring at a gun that's held as steady as that one, just what did you do? Now, uh, you go first, Weaver. You're going to ride a few yards ahead of the sheriff and me. See, I want to talk to the sheriff confidentially. During the five-mile ride to Murdoch's house, the Lone Ranger kept Weaver riding ahead so he wouldn't hear the conversation between the masked man and the sheriff. Finally, the three horsemen reined up. Oh, 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 oh. I'd like to know what you two had to say that was so all fired confidential. You'll find out later on, Barney. Go on into the house. I should have known what you're doing. Go ahead. We're right behind you. I go right on into the bedroom and check up on what you told me. All right, Sheriff. Barney and I'll wait here. But I want. I said we'd wait here. Uh, all right. What'd you tell the sheriff? Oh, I told him a number of things. I told him it was a log and not a dead man that went through that window. What? I told him I was at the bottom of the ravine when the log came down. I offered to show him the log. Oh, wait. Hold you... it, hold it. Here comes the sheriff. Well, I guess you told me the true facts, all right. Did you see Murdoch stretched out in there? What? I saw him. You, you saw Jim Murdoch? I've seen enough dead men so as I can tell to within a few hours how long the critter's been cold. I'm ready to swear that Jim Murdoch was alive when Abner Jenkins left here last night. No. Oh. And Jenkins can easily prove that he hasn't been here since last night. Yep. He can alibi for this morning all right enough. And he's cleared. I reckon he is. Sheriff, his, his Murdoch... He's stretched out flat on his back in the bedroom. He should have made a more complete search of the house, Barney. I... Hold on. You were here this morning, Barney. No, Sheriff, I... wonder I... if you had any reason to murder your friend. How about this, Sheriff? It was on the floor near the fireplace. What's that? Partly burned note. Note for $5,000, and uh, Barney Weaver's name is on it. Now, hold on. I never borrowed any cash from Murdoch. Yeah, this is downright interesting. Puts a new light on things. No. 
No, no, I didn't know Merrick could die. I didn't kill him. There's a good case of circumstantial evidence against you, Barney. I'm framed. This note is the motive. It's forged. You admit being here in the house this morning. What's more, you tried to frame Jenkins for the murder. No, no. You took the watch and ring to Jenkins' house. You planted them there as evidence. But I... Don't try to deny that. I I didn't kill Murdoch. Then why'd you try to frame someone else? I... I, Are you going to talk or let a jury hang you on circumstantial evidence? I... Sheriff, listen to me. It was all Murdoch's idea. What was? He, he wanted Abner out of the way. He wanted to frame him so he'd hang for murder. Why do you want that? He was afraid Jenkins would learn how he got swindled on the gold mine. So he was swindled. Yes. Murdoch had everything worked out. He gave Abner a lot of stuff so it looked like a robbery. He had me help him fix this room to look like there'd been a fight. Then the tuba shoved a log through that window. So as I'd think it was the dead body. Yes. How did Murdoch plan to play dead and continue as owner of his gold mine? He made a will. You can check on that, Sheriff. He left everything to a cousin in the East. He was going to reappear as the cousin. Well, does that cover everything, Sheriff? It sure does. Bring him in here, Toto. Who, who are you talking to? Weaver, no one actually said that Murdoch was dead. What? Here he comes. You get in there. Murdoch! Get in. Ah, you all fired weak-minded fool. You had to squeal your head off. But I thought that... Why didn't you yell out or something? You know they were tricking me. Yell out with that red skin holding a knife within a half inch of my throat? You tricked me. You fake that note, you... I'll show you. Well, thanks. No. Great day. You drove him clear across the room. I hoped he'd want to play rough, Sheriff. Throw some water on him, Toto. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yellow squealer. I'm glad he got a sample of what you handed me. Murdoch, would you like to show the sheriff what we did before he came? No, no, now don't go over me again. Perhaps you'd rather square things with Jenkins before you and Barney go on trial. What about that, Murdoch? You might need Jenkins on your side. All right. Uh, I'll square things with him. I, I'd rather have half the gold mine and no worry about it than, than the whole thing with the worry I've been having. You've learned a lot, Murdoch. Too bad you had to learn it a uh, hard way. Let's go, Toto. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 